Welcome back to my garage guys. In this video I'm doing work on the Supra, finally. Winter is near enough over, it looks very sunny outside, but I need to get cracked on with the Supra because I told you in the last video that I'm using it as one of my wedding cars, and when I say one of the wedding cars, the wedding cars that's taking me to the church because the missus don't want to get in it with a dress, understandable. I've got my best man driving me. I want the car to be a top performer, so we are refreshing all of the cooling system. I've shown you in the last video all of the new hoses that I've got and all the new clamps and I've got a digital thermostat dingy majiggy gauge whatever it's called a Davies Creek thermostatic thing that <laughs> I can't remember what it's called uh, and we'll be fitting that in another video as well but today we'll be doing draining the cooling system changing the water pump changing the thermostat and all of the pipes I need to move the cars around, you can currently hear my super is up and running already, so let's give you a bit of a cin cinematic whilst I move stuff around. many things about having a Supra is it sounds freaking awesome. Now don't get me wrong, she was a bit of a bad start because she's not been started properly all winter so I've left her running for a bit. She's starting to warm up now and she sounds amazing. I mean just listen to a purr. And then you give it some of the loud pedal and she sounds epic. I don't know which sounds better, front end or back. <laughs> I love having the super. That noise is amazing. It's amazing! So much flutter. <laughs> Oh dear me, I'm just letting her warm up because like I said she's not been ran all winter uh, so it's a good six months since she properly warmed up last so I'm letting it warm through, right through, everything, exhaust a lot getting her up to temperature and letting it sit idling for a bit uh, and then we're going to get her up in the air and we can start doing all this cooling upgrades business we've got planned Super warms up. I thought I'd show you an idea that I have. So I've told you that I'm going to wrap the MR2 and I'm still torn between colours. But I've ordered a sample colour of one of the options and it looks really nice. But now it's in the sun, I don't know if it's too um, garish. So, yes, it's purple. And it looks, it looks nice. That's dust. That's dust from my hand when I put it on. <coughs> oh, it does look nice. But I don't know if I want purple now. I've seen it on the car because it's very, very bright. Uh, I, I don't know now. You let me guys what you think. I've been looking at greys and blues and blacks so I might get some samples of them as well. But that is the... Uh, a sample of purple. I might tear a bit off and stick it on bonnet or something so I can get a good likeness of it. I might stick it up here on roof line. Yeah, I'm gonna go and do that. There we have a test piece. 
it's certainly a very distinctive colour and it does look really nice in the sun but it's really metallic so it's metallic just like the paint you wouldn't know it's not paint I should have done it without gloves but you know there are little scratches in it but again it's just a test sample I feel like I need to get a test bit of black now test bit of blue maybe a test bit of grey of all the different colours that I'm thinking of <laughs> and then pick one but it does look nice but is it too much? I don't know. I have a bright red super, so nothing can be too much, surely. So believe it or believe it not, which I'm sure you can because I'm an idiot, obviously I left the car running for so long yesterday that it all got up to temperature, which was good, but then I couldn't drain the coolant because I didn't want to take the cap off and it was all hot and scalding and I didn't want to burn myself. So it's actually the next day now because I had a few other things to do in yesterday afternoon. Um, so I'm back with the car. I'm holding the bonnet up with my head. I have one on. I'm not tall enough. I can't do this. I can't do this. I did it. I did it. So when it was running yesterday, I noticed a clicking ticking noise, like tick 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 tick. And I've been told that it could be that bear in there. So what I'm gonna do, oh, I'll insert a clip now and you can hear what it is. Hopefully you've now seen the clip. I need to remember to put this in the editing. So I'm gonna quickly whip this belt off. Give it a quick fire over for a couple of seconds, see if the ticking noise is gone. Um, and fingers crossed it is that bearing and then I can replace the bearing. So I've just undone the belt. I've removed it away from that bottom pulley so it not catch it. Now fire it up, quickly come around with the camera, listen for a ticking. If the ticking's still there, then I know it's not that. Don't sound the best, but was it ticking? Oh, it is. Yeah, I think it's that. Either I'm gonna fire it up and listen for a ticking. If there's no ticking, we know it's that rearing. It don't sound good either way. Anyway, not in gear, not in gear. Craft immobilizer and key and go. Oh no, I can still hear ticking. It's still ticking from somewhere. At least we know it's not that. Right, I'm gonna fire it off now. So, hmm, I still have ticking, even though that bearing doesn't sound great. Not quite sure what it is now. Hmm. Anyway, I may as well leave the belt off, to be fair. I just need to get the water pump out, drain all the coolant, and let's get cracked on. Here I have a 12 litre tub, so that should be more than enough to hold everything that's going to come out of this radiator. But who knows? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off, oh no, I'm going to pull off the bottom hose, but I'm actually going to take the drain tap out if it'll come out there. In the middle of the screen now, you see the drain tap. So I'm going to undo that if that looks like it's going to come out. I can see the seals perished around it. Oh, maybe I should leave that one alone. Oh, hang on, it does move. I might go straight for that and see what happens. <coughs> if it's perished, I may as well put a new seal on it anyway, because obviously there's no point at leaking at a later date and dropping all the coolant out. So we'll get that little drain tap out. Don't forget that as an aftermarket radiator, so it's not the same as a normal stock one. Uh, and we will go from there. Yeah, so at the moment we're still draining. I took off the uh, cap of the radiator after a little while. Oh, come on, get back in there. And that um, helped the rest of the water just fly out. So it created a, a vacuum or whatever, sucked in the air and out it came. That's the noise it made as well, went And it very quickly shot out. Mmm. Really done. 
and we'll leave this drain bung in as well because that uh, rubber O seal is um, very uh, cracked and worn and I'll replace it for a new one. I'll leave it off for now. I'll put it on the bench. I'll make sure I stick it back in before um, we top it back up. We're just going to keep dripping for a little bit. So, going to come back to you when it stops dripping, I suppose. So, whilst the last few remaining drips and drabs are coming out of the bottom of the radiator, it's now time to start looking at removing the water pump and these hoses and pipes and bits of bob that's, that's everywhere. As you can see, they're everywhere. Um, I have my hand on one, for example. There's definitely nothing left in the radiator now. It's literally the last drips. So, there's the top hose, there is the bottom hose. The um, bottom hose obviously be done from under the car. The bottom hose comes up and round into the housing which is just there uh, which is the thermostat housing and we're also going to need to get to it now I'm going to take off the air filter to give us a bit more room and hopefully I can do it without disturbing the distributor because it's all set up at the moment some of you are going to say oh look at these wire in this plug I have a new plug that I'm going to solder on and that will fix that and make it look perfect uh, so yeah I'm going to get the air filter off get the HT lead out of the way and hopefully we can start to get at some of the nuts and bolts for the water pump I'm hoping there's not any behind the plastic cover because if there is I've got to remove this to get the plastic cover off and I bet you it probably is and there's only one way to find that out really and that is by looking at this and already I'm assuming I've got to take the cover off because the water channel is there I just hit my head yeah, we're going to have to get the plastic covers off. Uh, dear me. So, fun and games, it's time to start stripping. little time lapse you've just seen me remove the bottom hose off of there still on the bottom of the radiator at the moment uh, I've undone the bolts for this top pipe here which is now loose you can see obviously the air filters off and the uh, king lead for the HD leads are off take the rest of what's good very 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 little play in there happy with that eBay turbo <clears throat> and it makes some mad noises so we're well happy with that so now oh, we may as well take this belt off since the belt's now loose that's another thing to add to the pile of growing bits we've taken off and to get this off I don't need it off but it's going to just give me a bit more room so I'm going to quickly undo them uh, get that allen key bolt out that one out there one in the middle, that's three allen key bolts, get them out of the way. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna crack on with that now. So I've gone ahead and undone the bolts in that plastic cover that I can get to at the moment. Took the water pump pulley off as you can see. Uh, what else did I take off? Oh, the plastic cover that was there. Definitely got to set the bottom pulley off. Now, any super owner will know that is the worst thing you can possibly do. The hardest thing you'd ever have to do. Because that nut is freaking tight now there are a couple of cheating methods that I'm going to attempt to do and that is locking it against the floor and using the starter motor to crank it um, and hoping for the best really well I'm not quite sure how I did it because I think last time I did it I broke my uh, breaker bar so I need another breaker bar mm -hmm. I'll come back to it when I've figured this one out so I've just previously mentioned that that bolt is ridiculously tight to undo now in an effort of being transparent with everyone, because I don't like the other YouTubers that just go, oh, it's, you do it like this and it's dead easy and it's done. Um, transparency, the way forwards. The bolt wasn't tight. Which is very scary. Because I've just been putting my um, socket on to uh, test and I can undo it with my fingers. So that is scary. What that also goes to show is 
I did put it on, and I put it on tight, like really tight before. I think that might have been how I broke my brake bar. But I didn't use any Loctite or anything, and maybe I should have used Loctite. Either way, it's made life a little easier right now. I'll just need to make sure I'll put it on tight next time. Tighter. Might also give it a quick lick of paint as well, because it's looking a bit rusty down there. And there we have the big ass bolt that I've just undone with my fingers. Not good. Now, is this loose? It shouldn't be loose. I'm gonna have to get that some pry bars behind it and pry it off because it's sat on a little wood roof key, which is a little piece of metal which locks it onto the shaft. So, I'm gonna get that pried off. So, the ongoing issue with my car is I need a puller, and my puller is not big enough. <laughs> and I can't get it off any other way. I've tried prying it, it's not loose. I need to buy myself a bigger puller. So I'm a little bit stuck with that now until I go and get myself one. So I might just start swapping hoses out. Because <laughs> I don't know what else to do to get a puller. <laughs> so I can't get the pump just yet. It's getting windy. So welcome to my pile of coolant bits and bobs. So starting over here on the right, we have all of the hoses. These are coolant hoses and breather hoses, as far as I'm led to believe. So I think that's what my uh, list was. All sorts of different hoses, big hoses, small hoses, every every hose that's on the engine, this should all be in that pile, and they're all the correct shape, and they should fit exactly the same as all the originals. The old ones are 26 years old, what's my car, yeah, 26 years old, so obviously these are nice and new and a good replacement. These are the clamps I went for, nice, big, chunky, securing clamps for every single hose in there, except for the really small ones, would you? These little diddy ones, but... New clamps, new hoses, because I hate the clamps that are on at the moment. We have Extreme G30 antifreeze coolant, which is concentrate. I need about 8 litres of coolant. Could be a little bit more because I've got a bigger radiator now and it's uh, like a 50-50 mix. So I'll use like 4 litres of this and 4 litres of water. Moving across here, we have the first line thermostat. Because obviously I'm replacing everything in the cooling system. A new seal for it, new thermostat. Then moving across we have the first line water pump. So this is the brand new water pump. Obviously thermostat goes in there, in that little housing. I think there's another piece on one of the pipes on the car that I need, which will go on there as well. Obviously we have new little studs to go in there and seals and bits and bobs. Hopefully we have everything we need. That seal goes in there, that goes on, yep, yeah, yeah, we should have everything we need. So this is going to be pretty comprehensive. And the last thing I've got to mention is our digital fan switch. Now this is the Davis Craig one, um, world's best auto cooling it says. Also be installing that at the same time as this, but I'll be doing that as a separate how-to video over on the Blue Leaves Garage car mod tutorial channel. So that's where you'll see that. You might see little clips in this one, but this video predominantly is everything else we'll probably a little clip of that full install video of that will go on the other channel so i pulled the top hose off now it's a case of finding a hose which one's going to be exactly the same is it this one no obviously not it should be this one whichever way around it goes yeah like that then we need to find which are the right uh, <laughs> which are the right size clamps. Probably that. Which is what? 40 to 43. There's another 40 to 43 somewhere in there. Not that, not that, not there, not that. Alright, well there's only one. Not a good start, is it? What's that? No. They're big. That's a big one. They're decent. Maybe, maybe it's not that. But it is. It is that size. There's no more left in the bag. Any left in that bag? Over it came out. Oh. No. Have I dropped some round here? Where they've been sat? Because they've been sat on here? No. There's nothing there. So, the very first hose. Looks like I'm freaking missing the clamp already. I'm not, I'm not just going blind. I can't be going blind. Right, I'm going to put them out in size order. Right, so they're in size order. 
There's three of that size and one of that size. So I'm going to have to use one of them with one of them. That is a 44 to 47 and that is a 40 to 43. They're going to have to be it. Because them other two are going to have to go on like the bottom hose. Ah, the bottom hose is a different size, look. So is that for that one? Ah, so then you should be for that one. Well, yeah, but, but you'd probably fit on that one as well, to be fair. Just. But you are definitely smaller on that end. Where you are not. You're the same both ends. But you are fatter on one end. You're fat on that end. Smaller on that end. So I'm going to use two of the big ones. For that. Let's get it on. A new hose on, finally. One one new hose out of all the other hoses. There's all of them up there. Like this one up here, that is an original hose. That one is not. That's one that the A man made when the other one split and I got stranded away from home and made it up. But it's not right. So now we have the right one. So we'll be able to get it fitted. But it's getting very windy. So another couple of days have passed now, guys. Uh, I do have a puller, which is good, so I can get the bottom pulley off. But the country is now in pretty much lockdown due to the coronavirus outbreak. So I'm now off work for the next seven weeks, as probably many of you are. So I am going to continue my best to make videos and get videos up so you guys can watch them. Uh, I'm staying at home, but that doesn't mean I can't go outside and enjoy this glorious sun. I've already started doing jobs, like I've already got half my fence paint well a third of my fence painted but it's got a bit hot now uh, and the paint's drying a bit too quick so i want to carry on with the supra i've got my pulley pour so i'm going to pull my pulley with my pulley pour off uh, and then we'll be able to get the water pump off and continue with this supra so i'm going to carry on with that so i can't get my puller on because there's not enough room between my radiator and my fans and the pulley so I can't get the puller to pull the pulley. So the radiator's coming out. Time left time. Well, that was a pain in the ass and I'm not going to lie I put the puller in the wrong place to start with I put the puller on this edge thinking it will just put it out there and ended up snapping off a little bit of the harmonic balancer which is not good because as the name suggests it's a harmonic balancer so now it's going to be unbalanced but I don't have a spare for the moment so it will be going back on but I will be getting a new one because it does look in a bad state anyway but that is the transparency of my channel now. I will tell you when I mess up. Finally, I can get this cover off bolt there. And I can get the cover off and get the water pump out. Yay. What a pig that was. Water pump is off. Tension is still there, but I'm going to have to somehow take this off now, unbolt it and squash it back in and put the pin in so I can time the belt up. Time to put the top, time to put the bottom. Uh, previous timing marks there from when I last did it, so nice and easy. But the pump is off, got the old gasket seal to scrape off. Uh, same as up here, no gasket I need to put on there, but she's off. Here we have the pump, oh, the old pump. It might have been working all right, but I wanted to overhaul the whole system. So, old pump is off. 
and all that had to come off to get it off. <laughs> but we're there, she's off. So I think this is the perfect point to end this video because everything is off with the exception of some of the old hoses and I want to replace them as I put the new stuff back on so I can do one for one and not get confused with anything. Um, as you can see we've got all the new shiny stuff here. The old one is off, the new one is ready to go. I just need to clean up the engine bay and remove all the old seals. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it looks at the moment. Uh, it's as empty as it's going to be and I've got stuff to take off. So it's a long video, we're all in lockdown. I'm hoping you enjoy this video and I can carry on with the nice weather and get out the next video. And you can check out my other videos on my other channels. Uh, all the links for them in the descriptions. So check out any other stuff um, that I've, I've done recently. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you look after yourself guys. Stay safe out there because we're in lockdown. Don't go out and cough on anyone. And if someone coughs on you, run away. And disinfect yourself. I don't know. Stay humble guys. Bye bye.